in signal processing and related disciplines, aliasing is an effect that causes different signals to become indistinguishable when sampled. It also refers to the distortion or artifact that results when the signal reconstructed from samples is different from the original continuous signal. Aliasing can occur in signals sampled in time, for instance digital audio, and is referred to as temporal aliasing. Aliasing can also occur in spatially sampled signals, for instance digital images. Aliasing in spatially sampled signals is called spatial aliasing. Description When a digital image is viewed, a reconstruction is performed by a display or printer device, and by the eyes and the brain. If the image data is not properly processed during sampling or reconstruction, the reconstructed image will differ from the original image, and an alias is seen. An example of spatial aliasing is the Moira copyright pattern one can observe in a poorly pixelized image of a brick wall. Spatial anti-aliasing techniques avoid such poor pixelizations. Aliasing can be caused either by the sampling stage or the reconstruction stage. These may be distinguished by calling sampling aliasing preliasing and reconstruction aliasing postaliasing. Temporal aliasing is a major concern in the sampling of video and audio signals. Music, for instance, may contain high frequency components that are inaudible to humans. If a piece of music is sampled at 32,000 samples per second, any frequency components above 16,000 Hz will cause aliasing when the music is reproduced by a digital to analog converter. To prevent this, an anti aliasing filter is used to remove components above the nearest frequency prior to sampling. In video or cinematography, Temporal aliasing results from the limited frame rate, and causes the wagon wheel effect, whereby a spoked wheel appears to rotate too slowly or even backwards. Aliasing has changed its apparent frequency of rotation. A reversal of direction can be described as a negative frequency. Temporal aliasing frequencies in video and cinematography are determined by the frame rate of the camera, but the relative intensity of the aliased frequencies is determined by the shutter timing or the use of a temporal aliasing reduction filter during filming. Like the video camera, most sampling schemes are periodic. That is, they have a characteristic sampling frequency in time or in space. Digital cameras provide a certain number of samples per degree or per radian, or samples per m in the focal plane of the camera. Audio signals are sampled with an analog to digital converter, which produces a constant number of samples per second. Some of the most dramatic and subtle examples of aliasing occur when the signal being sampled also has periodic content. Band limited functions. Actual signals have finite duration and their frequency content, as defined by the Fourier transform, has no upper bound. Some amount of aliasing always occurs when such functions are sampled. Functions whose frequency content is bounded have infinite duration. If sampled at a high enough rate, determined by the bandwidth, the original function can in theory be perfectly reconstructed from the infinite set of samples. Bandpass signals Sometimes aliasing is used intentionally on signals with no low frequency content, called bandpass signals. Under sampling, which creates low frequency aliases, can produce the same result, with less effort, as frequency shifting the signal to lower frequencies before sampling at the lower rate. Some digital channelizers exploit aliasing in this way for computational efficiency. See sampling, nearest rate, and filter bank. Sampling sinusoidal functions Sinusoids are an important type of periodic function because realistic signals are often modeled as the summation of many sinusoids of different frequencies and different amplitudes. Understanding what aliasing does to the individual sinusoids is useful in understanding what happens to their sum. Here, a plot depicts a set of samples whose sample interval is one, and two different sinusoids that could have produced the samples. The sample rate in this case is, for instance, if the interval is one second, the rate is one sample per second. Nine cycles of the red sinusoid and one cycle of the blue sinusoid span an interval of ten samples. The corresponding number of cycles per sample are a and if these samples were produced by sampling functions a cos, 2i euro, 0.9 zai, a and a cos, 2i euro, 
0.1 Zi, that they could also have been produced by the trigonometrically identical functions, a cos, 2i euro, a 0.9x plus i, a and a cos, 2i euro, a 0.1x plus i, a which introduces the useful concept of negative frequency. In general, when a sinusoid of frequency is sampled with frequency the resulting number of cycles per sample is, and the samples are indistinguishable from those of another sinusoid whose normalized frequency differs from by any integer or replacing negative frequency sinusoids by their equivalent positive frequency representations, we can express all the aliases of frequency as AA for any integer n, or with AA being the true value, and n has units of cycles per sample. Then the now equals a1 alias of a is a a. Aliasing matters when one attempts to reconstruct the original waveform from its samples. The most common reconstruction technique produces the smallest of the a frequencies. So it is usually important that be the unique minimum. A necessary and sufficient condition for that is where is commonly called the nihwist frequency of a system that samples at rate in our example. The nihwist condition is satisfied if the original signal is the blue sinusoid. A but if a the usual reconstruction method will produce the blue sinusoid instead of the red one. Folding, in the example above, A and are symmetrical around the frequency A and in general, as increases from 0 to A decreases from A to A similarly, as increases from A to A continues decreasing from to 0. A graph of amplitude versus frequency for a single sinusoid at frequency and some of its aliases at and would look like the four black dots in the adjacent figure. The red lines depict the paths of the four dots if we were to adjust the frequency and amplitude of the sinusoid along the solid red segment. No matter what function we choose to change the amplitude versus frequency, the graph will exhibit symmetry between zero and this symmetry is commonly referred to as folding and another name for is folding frequency. Folding is most often observed in practice when viewing the frequency spectrum of real-valued samples using a discrete Fourier transform. Complex sinusoids Complex sinusoids are waveforms whose samples are complex numbers, and the concept of negative frequency is necessary to distinguish them. In that case, the frequencies of the aliases are given by just, a therefore, as increases from a to a goes from a up to zero a consequently, complex sinusoids do not exhibit folding. Complex samples of real-valued sinusoids have zero-valued imaginary parts and do exhibit folding. Sample frequency. When the condition is met for the highest frequency component of the original signal, then it is met for all the frequency components, a condition known as the Nyquist criterion. That is typically approximated by filtering the original signal to attenuate high frequency components before it is sampled. They still generate low frequency aliases, but at very low amplitude levels, so as not to cause a problem. A filter chosen in anticipation of a certain sample frequency is called an anti aliasing filter. The filtered signal can subsequently be reconstructed without significant additional distortion for example by the Hitakura euro shannon interpolation formula. The Nyquist criterion presumes that the frequency content of the signal being sampled has an upper bound. Implicit in that assumption is that the signal's duration has no upper bound. Similarly, the Hitakura euro shannon interpolation formula represents an interpolation filter with an unrealizable frequency response. These assumptions make up a mathematical model that is an idealized approximation, at best, to any realistic situation. The conclusion, that perfect reconstruction is possible, is mathematically correct for the model, but only an approximation for actual samples of an actual signal. Historical usage Historically the term aliasing evolved from radio engineering because of the action of superheterodyne receivers. When the receiver shifts multiple signals down to lower frequencies, from RF to IF by heterodyning, an unwanted signal, from an RF frequency equally far from the local oscillator frequency as the desired signal, but on the wrong side of the LO, can end up at the same IF frequency as the wanted one. If it is strong enough it can interfere with reception of the desired signal. This unwanted signal is known as an image or alias of the desired signal. Angular aliasing, aliasing occurs whenever the use of discrete elements to capture or produce a continuous signal causes frequency ambiguity. 
spatial aliasing, particular of angular frequency, can occur when reproducing a light field or sound field with discrete elements, as in 3D displays or wave field synthesis of sound. This aliasing is visible in images such as posters with lenticular printing, if they have low angular resolution, then as one moves past them, say from left to right, the 2D image does not initially change, then as one moves to the next angular image, the image suddenly changes a euro, and the frequency and amplitude of this side-to-side -side movement corresponds to the angular resolution of the image, which is the angular aliasing of the 4D light field. The lack of parallax on viewer movement in 2D images and in 3D film produced by stereoscopic glasses can similarly be seen as loss of angular resolution, all angular frequencies being aliased to zero. More examples, online audio example, the qualitative effects of aliasing can be heard in the following audio demonstration. Six sawtooth waves are played in succession, with the first two sawtooths having a fundamental frequency of 440 Hz the second two having fundamental frequency of 880 Hz, and the final two at 1760 Hz. The sawtooths alternate between band-limited sawtooths and aliased sawtooths and a sampling rate is 22.05 kHz. The band-limited sawtooths are synthesized from the sawtooth waveforms Fourier series such that no harmonics above the nighest frequency are present. The aliasing distortion in the lower frequencies is increasingly obvious with higher fundamental frequencies, and while the band-limited sawtooth is still clear at 1760 Hz, the aliased sawtooth is degraded and harsh with a buzzing audible at frequencies lower than the fundamental. Direction finding, a form of spatial aliasing can also occur in antenna arrays or microphone arrays used to estimate the direction of arrival of a wave signal as in geophysical exploration by seismic waves. Waves must be sampled at more than two points per wavelength, or the wave arrival direction becomes ambiguous. Notes. See also, Jaggies, Kell factor, sink filter, sink function, stroboscopic effect, wagon wheel effect, glossary of video terms, further reading, sampling and reconstruction, chapter 7 inches, citations. External links, aliasing by a sampling oscilloscope by Tektronics application engineer, anti-aliasing filter primer by Levida Leica discusses its purpose and effect on the image recorded. Frequency aliasing demonstration by Burton McKenzie using stop frame animation and a clock. Interactive examples demonstrating the aliasing effect.